And number eight, ownership. This, it's always somebody else's problem, is something I simply failed to get across, uh, is that change. It's not somebody else's problem. It's their problem. It's like, um, and, and I wrote something on LinkedIn about this uh, a couple of years ago, and um, I must repost it, I must admit. It's the idea that, yes, it is the Scrum Master's role to resolve um, blockages and um, impediments, but they're still owned by the team. Uh, it's like saying, you've got a leaky tap in your bathroom. You've called the plumber, it's now their problem. No, it's not. It's still your problem. It's in your bathroom. Um, if there's something happening where the plumber just doesn't make it that day, what's going to happen? Your tap is still going to leak. It's your tap. And this is something that I, I had real problems with trying to get across to everybody. They're always saying, oh, it's not my problem. Or, um, you know, or blaming it's, it's somebody else's problem. No, it's not. If it's affecting you, it's your problem. If somebody else not doing something is affecting you, it's still your problem because it's affecting you. What are you going to do about it? You know, and it's that idea that I, that I couldn't get. But in the end, I took a look at what's happening there. After a couple of years, um, I felt that uh, they needed something, somebody different to take them to their next level, if you like, because I'd done what I could. Um, and I was, um, I went away very, very pleased with that. Um, but what really made a difference? What actually did make a difference? Well, the first one is training. I can't emphasize that. I know, and I know, I know, I own a company that does training, and I'm not trying to sell the training. I'm doing that because I own a company that does training, and that's why I know it's so effective. It is very effective. It doesn't matter. People will, will if they're not speaking the same language, if they're not on the same page, if you say uh, sprint and they're thinking something different, or if you say stand up and they're thinking something different, it won't work. Get everybody on the same page. That was the big step that said to people, we need to change, is that training. The next one is um, teams. And I know that's been talked about long-lived teams all the way through from a lot of people. There's a lot of books written about it, a lot of articles, uh, a lot of discussions, but it's true. It is that the teams don't belong to a project. The project gives work to the teams. There is a difference. The team is then able to organize the work around how they are best to deliver it, and they're the best ones to do that. Drop the decision-making to the lowest possible point. Sometimes that's the CEO. Sometimes it's the person doing the actual work. So if the person doing the work can make the decisions on how they're going to do the work, they're the ones that are doing it. They'll know best. We hired them because of their skill. Um, we trained them to be what the best they could. So allow them to make the decisions. Um, teams control only what they can control. That's another one that made a huge difference. It's very difficult for a team to see everything going through the different um, on a Kanban board or a scrum board, whichever the work they're doing, uh, and get to one particular column and nothing ever going across, nothing ever burned down. In fact, their, their lines that they have, their burned down lines would either flat line or it might go up with new things being put in. And that's it. So control their work and only what they can control. And if they can't, don't control it, it's none of their business. Um, so, you know, get out of it. Only control what they can control. And they can't control user acceptance testing. So that's it. Um, ongoing coaching, a big one. There's a saying in New Zealand, you know, New Zealand's got the, um, uh, the All Blacks, the world's greatest ever. Um, rugby team. Absolutely, you know, hands down, world's greatest rugby team. But even the All Blacks have coaches. And that's the idea that uh, you're looking at. Um, you don't necessarily need a full-time employed coach on there because they'd be twiddling their thumbs most of the time. 
What you need is somebody who can come in often, be available to answer questions, be able to drop something and come on in and see a team when they're having difficulties, be there um, to be seen a few times, perhaps even a couple of days a week, but certainly have a coach. It's that coach that will keep it in because if it's not, even if the team are the most brilliant, agile teams you've ever come across, they will eventually work back into their safety areas uh, if they don't have an agile team asking questions, an agile coach, sorry, asking questions. And sometimes those questions are difficult to answer and challenging. And that's what I love about it. It's really like that, very difficult to challenge.